This week we'll learn what moray patterns are and how you can fix them. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, recently I got a frantic email from a professional photographer and she had an issue. She was shooting a wedding and after she got her pictures back, she noticed that there was a crazy pattern all over the groom's jacket. Now, we can't show you that picture because the people that she shot didn't want us to, but we have a similar image. Here's the image right here and you can see that there's this crazy pattern on this shirt. Now, the person that wrote in, we'll just call her Cindy, asked, what is this? Is this something that I did while I was shooting the wedding? Well, Cindy, Cindy, absolutely not. What you're seeing here is something called a moray pattern. And a moray pattern comes from the convergence of lines that are created by different uh, sewing patterns. So the threads actually make these lines and those lines as they move make these wacky patterns. And to really illustrate this, we have a, an animation here and it shows you some circles and how those circles, when you overlap them, they create these same moray patterns. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a closer look at a set of concentric circles. Notice that as we change the size of our concentric circles, the lines get closer together and we can start to see some moray patterns emerging. If we add a second set of concentric circles, it just makes the moray patterns even more pronounced. And if we add some straight lines, it even gets more confusing. Now, if we start to move our shapes around, our lines and our circles, you can see that the moray patterns start to get really interesting. Okay, now that we know what a moray pattern is, and we know that it's caused by patterns in the weave of the cloth, now this happens a lot with silk and rayon, but it also happens with wool as well. So there are all kinds of different cloths that do this in all kinds of different patterns. And so the uh, best solution for this to fix that pattern is to find a shirt or a cloth that doesn't produce a moray pattern. Now, sometimes if you're shooting maybe a, a portfolio or some headshots or something, you can have your client bring several different shirts. And that way, if one creates a moray, you can have them change their outfit. But if you're shooting a wedding or if you're shooting an event, you don't have much control over what somebody is wearing, specifically if they spend a lot of money for a tuxedo or a wedding dress or something that they really love. And so in those situations that you can't prevent the moray pattern from happening, how can you fix it? Well, there are some things that you can do in Photoshop. Now, the sad thing is you can't totally eliminate a moray pattern. You can almost totally eliminate it and you can really minimize the effect, but you're still going to have some of that pattern show up in most cases, unless you're printing a very small picture. But here are two ways that in Photoshop you can fix that moray pattern. Well, I have a photo here that's got some strong moray patterns. You can see that this pattern right here and in this shirt and I'll zoom out here a little bit so this is a an actual photo from a photo shoot that a photographer sent me and you can see that it's got some strong patterns here that need to be eliminated now the good news is we can do a lot to get rid of these things I'm going to show you two different ways to do this the bad news is you can't completely get rid of these patterns the way to completely get rid of those is to use a cloth that doesn't produce a moray pattern so just be very very specific when you have clients come in or during a photo shoot that you have uh, cloths that are solid so you don't get these patterns that's really the best way to eliminate them but let's look at two ways that we can fix this in Photoshop so I've loaded this image into Photoshop it's on the background layer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lasso tool and I'm just going to quickly select every part of the image that has this moray pattern and this is the first way for us to do this. So I'm going to select most of the shirt. So I'm just going to keep selecting around this and up on the side here and down on the sleeve. I mean, this has just a lot of more. So I'll do that. Now I've got almost the entire shirt selected. I'll let go. And you can see that we have our marching ants here and we've selected almost the entire shirt. And if I really wanted to be careful about this, I might spend a little bit more time selecting this. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to select and I'm going to modify the edges and I'm going to feather them. Now it depends on the resolution of your image, but I'm going to feather this by about, oh, I'm going to say 30 pixels. And now that I have that feathered, what I will do is now I'm going to go to edit and copy my selection. 
or you can just hit Control C or Command C. The next step is to create a brand new layer. So on my layers palette, I'm going to create a new layer. And then I will paste in my selection. So on your new layer, you should have something that looks like this. That's the part of the shirt that's got that pattern. And you can see I can turn that on or off. And then you can check to see if your feathering is a little too much, which this is a little bit too much. I need to take that feather down. But for this purpose, for this demo, I'm just going to leave it as is. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to select my layer and I'm going to call this uh, fix. So this is my fix layer. And I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now that I have that, what I want to do is just change this radius until I see this pattern go away. So right here, we can still see the pattern, the Gaussian or the uh, Moray pattern right there. We can still see it here. So I'm going to just keep blurring this out, keep blurring it out, keep blurring it out, and just keep uh, adding more and more blur until it's gone. Make sure you have preview selected when you're doing this, by the way. And then as soon as we have that totally knocked out, and that looks about like that, we will say OK. Now that doesn't look very impressive right now. It just looks like a nasty blurred out shirt. But what we can do is we can use something that's really cool. And we can take this layer and instead of having it a normal blending mode, we can change this to color. And when we do, look at that. We have eliminated almost all of that moray pattern. And we've done that by changing the colors. Now, let me just show you. We're going to zoom in on this shirt, and it looks so much better. So this is before our fix. You can see that here are these lines, a line, another line. If we put this after that. You can see that those almost totally go away, and it is much closer to being um, an acceptable photo. So that's one way to fix a moray pattern. There's another way, though, that we can uh, use the same similar technique, but I think it works a little bit better. So I'm going to take this fix layer, I'm going to delete it, I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this layer Paint. And what I'm going to do is I am going to first go to my eyedropper tool so I can select a color. And I'm going to zoom in here full size. And with my eyedropper tool, I'm going to pick a color of the shirt that is uh, the most closely to what I want it to be in the final state. So you can see that there's a darker blue and a lighter blue and a darker blue. I'm going to choose the lighter, I mean the darker blue there. So I've got that selected. And um, just to make sure you can see this, my colors are black and white. I'm going to select this blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that to the front by hitting this little arrowy thing right here. So now I have that as my front color, my foreground color. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to select a brush. So here's the brush tool. I'll make sure I select that. And then in my brush tool, I want to make sure that it's a nice large brush and that it is nice and soft. And so maybe even larger than that. So there we go. Nice big brush. And then I'm just going to start painting right over the shirt any place that this shirt has some moray patterns that I want to get rid of. I'm just going to paint right over everything. I'm going to paint right over there, paint on this. And this technique, I think, works better. And this is one I discovered by accident, actually, while I was trying to fix some moray patterns. And so you don't have to be too specific about this. You can sort of go over the edges. I'm going to use my hand tool to move this up. Now, the one thing you want to do is make sure if you're painting on a piece of cloth, and this has to be a solid color piece of cloth for this to work, you can't paint on somebody's skin, you can't paint on the background, but I'll show you how you can fix things if you mess things up. So I'm just going to paint over this shirt, and I'll get it pretty darn close to what I think is right, and then I'll show you how this works. So now we've got this painted in. That looks pretty good. And I'll use my double click on the hand tool. And we can see this looks horrible right now. It looks really, really bad. But what we can do is we can use the same thing where we take this blending mode. We'll change it to color. And now you can see that it looks pretty darn good because it does a better job of filling in the colors between those lines. And it gets rid of most of that moray pattern. Now what we have to do though is we've got some problems on the sleeves here. And notice that our buttons aren't white anymore. Now they're blue. So we need to fix that. 
And that's really easy to do. We just go to our paint layer, the one that we just painted all that color on, add a mask. And then what we can do is we have, make sure we have our black in a foreground color. And so you can just hit D for default and then hit this little arrow to make sure you have black in the foreground. And then get our brush tool. Now we want a much smaller brush, a much harder brush. And so we'll get something that is much smaller. We'll put it about 80. And now we can start painting out some of those areas that we colored. And you can see that I'm fixing these buttons here. They're not blue anymore. They return to white. And then I can just start doing this and painting out areas that I accidentally painted blue. And it works really, really well. I can also fix these edges here. I'll just increase the size of my brush. And I can mask this off. And so now that works. And then I'll mask off over here where I sort of got too much. And you can see when I turn this on and off now, how I've really changed this. Instead of having it be a, uh, a really patterned shirt, it's now back to its solid color and it is passable. Now, if this is too blue, you can always change the color of this blue. Um, you can do some different things here. You can also change the opacity so it's not quite as much of a, of a fill. And so you've got all kinds of controls here to control how this fills in and how uh, much color you're throwing in there. But you can see, again, we'll zoom out. This is before lots of moray patterns. This is after, and we've corrected most of those patterns. But again, you're never going to get rid of them altogether. But those are two techniques that show you how you can, in a pinch, do some really good fixer-upper techniques in Photoshop. Okay, well there are two solutions for that moray pattern problem and you can see that Photoshop is a big help, but it doesn't get rid of it all together, but it will get you close. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. Remember, if you have a question about photography, you can send your questions to me at askmark at adorama.com and don't forget about the Adorama Learning Center. There are tons of articles about things like moray patterns and how you can prevent them and all of the videos that we've done in the past and product reviews and event coverage and all kinds of things are over at the Adorama Learning Center, so check it out. And don't forget to subscribe to our videos, and that way you don't miss a single episode. Well, thanks again for joining me this week. I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. When a line hits a line and makes a weird pattern, that's a more. <laughs> Digital photography one on one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.